On November 22, 1986, 20-year-old Mike Tyson made history when he was crowned boxing's youngest heavyweight champion of the world. But despite his fame and place in pop culture, there's a lot many people don't know about him, like his traumatic upbringing and some heinous things he's admitted he's done. Before becoming a trained and accomplished boxer, Mike Tyson lived with his mom and sister in the Bedford-Stuyvesant and Brownsville neighborhoods in Brooklyn, New York. And he was less than a year old when his vices began to take shape. He told DNA India that his mother would give him liquor and drugs to help him fall asleep. When his first boxing manager, trainer, and legal guardian, Cus D'Amato, died in 1985, Tyson was pushed to the point of no return. It was then that he began abusing drugs and alcohol to battle the grief, as he told Oprah Winfrey during a candid interview. Later, while on Howard Stern's Sirius XM radio show, Tyson attempted to explain how it feels to battle addiction. Think about you're starving. Think about you're starving. You're absolutely famished. And that drug with heroin, cocaine, and that's, and that's food. Though he said he was clean, he added that staying sober was a constant fight. One of the toughest battles of his life. This is a constant fight. And then eventually, that dark, that dark entity is going to knock on the door. Mike Tyson's behavioral issues began at an early age. In the eighth grade, he assaulted a teacher as just one example of the problems he would cause. Because of his behavior, he spent most of his time in school and special education classrooms before eventually dropping out of school entirely. In 1991, at the age of 25, Tyson was locked up behind bars and faced trial on a rape charge for which he was found guilty. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison at the Indiana Youth Center, with four of those years set aside for a suspended sentence and probation. During his incarceration, he finally had the time and an incentive to obtain his general equivalency diploma. He was reportedly given a deal. If he passed the GED exam, the authorities would agree to shave three months off of his sentence. He ended up flunking the GED exam, but Tyson wound up getting released after three years for good behavior anyway, and was placed on probation for the remainder of his punishment. Mike Tyson reportedly first tried cocaine at the age of 11 and continued to abuse the illicit drug for many years. During his heyday, the dynamic pugilist was unmatched and unstoppable, and little did we know, he was high on drugs most of the time. So how did he manage to pass the sport's mandatory drug tests before his bouts? Apparently, he used an apparatus full of someone else's clean urine, which he referred to as a whizzer. He went on to describe himself as a, quote, full-blown cokehead in his memoir, Undisputed Truth, and he confessed that during his June 2000 matchup against Lou Savarese, he had used cocaine and marijuana beforehand. He also confessed to using cocaine before a televised press conference with his opponent Lennox Lewis in January 2002, which led to an onstage brawl between the rival camps. Tyson ended the press conference with an offensive posture, hurling violent threats at a member of the press. Mike Tyson told Opie Radio that he was seven years old when an old man snatched him off the street and sexually assaulted him. Tyson said it was a one-time incident, and he was able to escape from his attacker by running away. He didn't report the crime to anyone at the time and said he never saw the man again. He kept the traumatic incident a secret for many years, saying on the program, quote, it was nobody's business to know. During the revealing and heartbreaking interview, one would assume the once electrifying athlete hadn't fully come to terms with the assault. He stated he wasn't sure if the incident drastically changed him or not, but the memory of that frightening day would stay with him always. Either way, Tyson says that he's neither embarrassed nor ashamed of what happened. In his one-man show, Mike Tyson, Undisputed Truth, the boxer stated he wasn't exactly sure who his real father was. A man named Purcell Tyson is listed on his birth certificate, but growing up, he knew Jimmy Curly Kirkpatrick as his father. He said during the show, Curly was the pimp, and you know, Purcell was the humble Jamaican cab driver. And I so desperately wanted to be the son of the pimp, because in my neighborhood in Brownsville, that carries weight. Nonetheless, Kirkpatrick would abandon Tyson when he was just two years old. He eventually reappeared in 1991. At the height of Tyson's boxing glory days, he told Playboy magazine, He was always trying to explain what happened between him and my mother, but I wasn't interested. By that time, I'd been through a relationship and had children and realized that people just don't get along sometimes. And sometimes kids suffer. It just happens. I always loved my father. I never held anything against him. 
Kirkpatrick would eventually die from a heart attack in 1992 while Tyson was behind bars. He was said to be distraught and upset over Kirkpatrick's passing, though he didn't ask for permission to briefly leave the facility so he could attend his dad's funeral, according to the Los Angeles Times. Describing his upbringing, the former heavyweight champion told Trace magazine that he came from a dysfunctional household. Before going on to describe some of the harrowing incidents that shaped his formative years, Crazy stuff like your mother's boyfriend trying to molest your sister. Or your mother getting beaten up by her boyfriend and as soon as the guy brings back some liquor and cigarettes, they're best friends again. You know what I mean? You never forget that kind of stuff. In an interview with The Guardian, he went into greater detail about his traumatic childhood and an incident with a man his mom was involved with. Eddie knocked out my mom's gold tooth and me and Denise, my sister, are screaming but my mother's real slick. She puts on a pot of boiling water. Next thing I know, she's pouring boiling water over Eddie. He was screaming, his back and face covered in blisters. He could still remember giving the man a quarter to help comfort him after his sister popped his blisters with a sterilized needle. He said the man used the money to buy alcohol for Tyson's mom. Although his trainer, Customato became his legal guardian, Mike Tyson reconnected with his mom, Lorna Tyson, later in life. At that point, her health was declining as she was dying of cancer. ESPN reported that Mike went to visit her in the hospital. Upon walking in, he saw flies buzzing all around her hospital room, pulled the covers over his ill mother, and left. As he put it in an interview with ESPN, the magazine, never went back again. I just partied every night. Sadly, no one even bothered to call him when his mom died in 1981, and tragedy would soon come knocking again in 1990 when his sister, Denise Anderson, died of apparent cardiac arrest at the age of 24. To recap, Mike lost his mother in 1981, his beloved trainer in 1985, his sister in 1990, and his father in 1992. Sadly, his dad's death wouldn't be the last time he lost someone close to him. In 2009, Mike Tyson's four-year-old daughter, Exodus, was found dead in the Phoenix, Arizona home she lived in with her mom and older brother. The child had reportedly been strangled by a cord connected to the family's treadmill. Following his daughter's passing, Tyson told Oprah Winfrey he wasn't sure of what really happened on that fateful day. But if he were to find out the truth, he could certainly point fingers. As he put it, if there's somebody to blame for it, there will be a problem. The former boxer later shared on The Ellen DeGeneres Show that he really wanted to raise hell when he rushed to the hospital upon hearing the news. He told the talk show host, Once I got to the hospital and saw other people there with either children who already died or were dying, they were handling it with dignity, and I didn't want to be the psycho parent up there. I wanted to handle it with dignity as well. The Washington Post reported that the millions of dollars Mike Tyson earned during his career were spent on a bunch of lavish purchases, including six homes, one of which was a Connecticut estate with 61 rooms and 38 baths. He even splurged on Mercedes-Benz cars for his bodyguards and plopped down $410,000 on a birthday party for his then-wife, Robin Givens. By 2003, Tyson had apparently squandered his fortune, close to $400 million, and was forced to file for bankruptcy. He was reportedly in debt to the IRS, the British tax authorities, and the mother of one of his children, who was owed more than $51,000 in child support. The boxer's debt totaled more than $27 million. As he claimed at the time in an affidavit, I have been in financial distress since 1998. Since that time, although my fight income, various asset sales, and litigation recoveries have enabled me to pay a lot of my debt, I am still unable to pay my bills. Two things that stand out about the erratic former athlete are his high-pitched voice and his lisp. As an adult, Mike Tyson's learned to embrace his speech impediment, and he even sold shirts that poked fun at himself with sayings like, thuns out, guns out. But as a child, the bullying was no laughing matter. Even after joining a street gang at the age of 12, his fellow gang members reportedly called him Fairy Boy because of his lisp. He later told GQ that, as a kid, the bullying became more than he could handle. It had a profound effect on me, being bullied. Um, I wish it didn't, but it had a real profound effect. Mike Tyson popped up in 2003 with a massive tattoo on the side of his face. At the time, his behavior was becoming increasingly erratic. 
so most people attributed the new facial ink to his odd antics. It wasn't until a 2014 interview with The Guardian that he explained the true reason behind his body art, saying, I just hated myself then. I literally wanted to deface myself. Initially, he wanted the tattoo artist to cover his face in stars. When the artist refused and suggested a Maori tribal design, Tyson rolled with it. Even though he got inked during a low point in his life, he still has no regrets. He told The Guardian, It looks awesome. That tattoo is me. In the beginning, some people were scared by it, but the bikers would shout out, Oh, that's beautiful, man. Great ink. During Mike Tyson and actress Robin Givens' ill-fated marriage, their relationship became the source of tabloid fodder. After rumors of alleged abuse, Tyson later admitted in the book Fire and Fear, the inside story of Mike Tyson, that his attack on Givens was, quote, the best punch I've ever thrown in my entire life. Another alleged argument during the then-couple's one-year marriage occurred in 1988, when Givens reportedly chose to attend the U.S. Open Tennis Championships instead of spending time with Tyson at his upstate New York training site. Sources shared with the Daily News that Tyson allegedly told Givens, quote, I'm going to go out and kill myself. Tyson later suffered a concussion and amnesia when he crashed his car into a tree outside of a friend's home. When Givens showed up at his hospital room, sources said he reportedly told her, I told you I'd do it, and as soon as I get out of here, I'll do it again. With two failed marriages underneath his belt, Mike Tyson took the plunge once again in 2009, shortly after the death of his daughter Exodus. The lucky lady was his on-again, off-again flame, Lakiha Kiki Spicer. In an interview with DNA India, Tyson claims that prior to meeting her, he had, quote, no concept of love. Looking back on his decision to get married for a third time, Tyson opened up to Oprah Winfrey saying, I reached a stage where I'm 43 and I'm just tired. I'm just tired of being alone and tired of not having that intimacy. Despite having a supportive wife in his corner, he still couldn't seem to shake the deep-rooted issues that had destroyed many of the relationships from his past. He told Oprah, I don't like being loved. I like loving. I don't like being loved. I have too much love to give and none to accept. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite celebrities and athletes are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.